Hello, my name's Mark and I am Chico Tutor. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to create our own PEC drill cycle with macros. So before we start, I just want to remind you, you should never copy code and put it into your own machine and expect it to work. I've not tested this, this code in a machine and it's purely a thought experiment. I wanna see if it's possible to make a drilling cycle by using macros. And that's what we're gonna go through in this video. Okay, so let's make a start. So the first line is our program number and also an operator's note. So the operator knows what this program does. Now, this next section, we're gonna be start setting variables. So what we're doing here is we take a variable, which is uh, 100, and we're setting it to a value of zero. Now, with variables, they're a container for a number. So we can set and put any number in any variable, and we can use maths to do that, and that's what I'm gonna show you in the rest of this video. Variable 101 will equal five millimeters, and this is gonna be our depth of PEC. Our final depth of our hole, we list as variable 102, and that's gonna be minus 50 mil. So we've got a 50 mil deep hole here. Variable 103 is gonna be one millimeter, and this is the retract amount. This is how far the drill pulls back after each peck. And finally, we've got a feed rate there of 104, and that gives us all of our um, macros to start off with. All of our variables are now set. So now we can call upon them as we go through the program and edit them with maths. So let's see how we can do that. So this section of the program, we've gone over many, many times before. This is just setting up our environment and getting the coolant on, the spindle running, setting up a basic safety line, that sort of stuff. And now, so that's putting the tool into the beginning of where we want to start cutting. Okay, so let's have a look at this macro loop. Now this is the important part of this video. So our first macro line, we're going to use a while loop. So what we're saying here is while our variable 100 is greater than our variable 102, then do one. And do one will run the program until it reaches the phrase end one. So currently our variable 100 is zero and our variable 102 is minus 50. So currently our variable 100 is greater than, and that's what GT is there. So it is greater than 102. So that means this loop will start and it will run. So this line, our geo one line sets our Z depth. So what we're saying here is we're using our, our linear movement, geo one, and we're coming down to a Z depth of variable 100 minus variable 101. So this is our initial start position of zero and we're gonna minus that from our PEC depth. And then we're gonna add a feed rate there as well, which we can also control using variables. So this is great if we're using different material. Then we're gonna set that variable again. We're gonna do a little bit of maths here. So we're gonna set variable 100, and we're gonna say that is now equal to variable 100 minus variable 101, which is our PEC depth. So currently we are looking at minus five millimeters. So that's gonna change the value of variable 100. So the reason it does that, it can now work with it. So now we've added some maths to that, we've changed that variable. Now it's counting how deep that peck is. So now we can use another loop command here. We can use an if statement. So this line is where things get really confusing and a little bit complicated. So this if statement here, what we're saying here is if variable 100 is less than variable 102, then change the variable 100. So. If currently our variable 100 is at minus five because um, we set that on the line above. So it's currently minus five, it does not equal minus 50. So what this is basically saying is once we get down to full depth, then change variable 100 to equal the same as our full depth value. So that's basically what this line is doing here. Okay, so let's move on to the next line and we can see here we've got another geo one move and we're setting Z at variable 100 plus variable 103, which is our retract amount. Now finally, we have another linear move, our geo one here, and we're setting our Z to the initial Z position, but we've been changing this variable 100 throughout this code. So once this reaches the final depth, it will end. If it's not at final depth, it's gonna rerun the sequence because the very first line, that while loop there, um, where variable 100 is greater than 102, it will look at that, and if it's not greater than 102, if it doesn't match our final depth, it's gonna run this again, and it's gonna keep going until it reaches final depth. Now, if it goes over our final depth, that's what the if statement line there takes care of. It'll take a look at that, 
and it won't, if it's at the final depth, it will adjust that to minus 50 millimeters and not any more. So this is all very confusing. So let's just go over it quickly again, just to make sure we understand what's going on. So at the beginning of our loop, we have our while variable 100 is greater than our variable 200. And if that is correct, then it's gonna read this section of code right down to end one. If it is not correct, it's going to skip this entire section and carry on reading the program. So this is a check to see if the ball is at final depth or not. Our next line, our G01Z equals variable 100 minus variable 101. So this takes our initial Z position, minuses our peck amount from it, and then sets that to our Z. The next line takes our variable 100 and minuses our peck depth from it. So it calculates how deep the tool point is at this point. Now, because our variable 100 is changed, we can now use that in an if statement and say, if that's less than 102, our final depth, then our variable 100 should equal our final depth. So that means if we're pecking and this comes out at 51 millimeters, it corrects that and says it can't go any deeper than 50 millimeters. So that's what this is doing. It's stopping us going too deep. Now the next command here, go one Z and a position. So we've got Z variable 100 minus variable 103. So that's our initial position minus our retract value. Let me take go one again and then set the depth to our initial peck position, but it's no longer our initial peck position. We've done all sorts of maths to it and it's calculating the endpoint of that tool. So once we've done all of this, it's gonna go back to the top and if that tool is not at final depth, it's gonna carry on running. And if it is at final depth, it's gonna skip the rest of this block and move on to the next section. So that next section is just a few bits of code there. It just sends the machine, the tool back to its tool change position and turns off the spindle and coolant. So although variables can get very complicated, you can see what we've made here. We've made a peck drilling cycle. We can use G83, of course, to do this way easier, but it's just a, Concept of proof that we can make any cycle using macros, but just be aware the maths can get a little bit confusing. Now just remember you should never copy code that you find online, even mine, into your machine and expect it to work. Each machine set up slightly differently and sometimes even the same make and model may be slightly different. So we need to be really careful about finding random code, putting it in the machine and expecting it to work. So be really careful using code you find online, even mine. My code is purely designed to teach and not designed to be copy and pasted into a machine and expect it to work. So if you want to know more about GCO programming, if you want to know about CAD CAM, machine shop maths, um, how to check your measuring equipment correctly, etc., pop over to my website at gcotutor.com where I have a bunch of paid courses and loads of free articles to really help your machining career.